On September the 12th, Ukrainian sappers broke through Russian defenses along the border near the village of Noviput, about 30 kilometers west of the Ukrainian standoff in the Kursk region. As Forbes writes, what looked like a short and minor assault quickly turned into a much more dangerous phenomenon for Russians. Ukrainian armored vehicles rapidly advanced several kilometers past the new route toward the nearest town of Veselo. The Ukrainian armed forces reached the southern outskirts of the town and practically took control of it. This happened no later than Saturday. Already on Sunday, a Defense Forces fighter jet dropped a glide bomb with satellite guidance on a possible Russian position in a building in the center of Veselogo. The destruction was monitored from a drone by fighters from the Ukrainian Korn UAV unit. We are watching you all, they joked on social media. As the publication notes, the Russian garrison around Vesologo includes a large number of poorly trained young conscripts who, according to Kremlin policy, should not participate in combat. It is likely that it was the involvement of inexperienced and poorly trained conscripts that led to the rapid advance of the Ukrainian armed forces in this direction. It's an ominous sign for the Russians that their defense efforts in Veseloy also appear to be relying on untrained young men in their teens and early 20s. If the Russians respond to the Ukrainian attack on Veseloy the same way they responded to the broader Ukrainian incursion into the Kursk region last month, they may end up redeploying some better trained airborne forces to blunt the Ukrainian advance. Forbes notes, Apart from the Khorne unit, it is unknown which Ukrainian forces are involved in the battle for Veseloy. However, it is worth noting that the UAV video shows that Turkish-made Kirpi armored trucks, popular among Ukrainian Marines, took part in the breakthrough. The 36th Marine Brigade is involved in the fighting east of Kursk, so it is possible that its fighters are involved in this operation as well. If Kyiv receives permission to launch Western long-range missile strikes 300 kilometers deep into Russia, more than 80% of Russian combat aircraft will not be able to carry out combat missions in Ukrainian airspace. Ukrainian military and political observer Alexander Kovalenko expressed confidence in this. The offensive capabilities of the infantry without air support will be undermined by 30% of the total fire potential, taking into account the specifics and effectiveness, he said. The expert insists that the claims of Western partners that it is pointless to strike Russian airbases with long-range missiles because all aircraft have been withdrawn are a lie. According to him, if the Su-25, Ka-52 and Mi-25 were at airbases outside the 300km zone, they would not be able to carry out their combat missions on Ukrainian territory due to their limited range. Therefore, any talk about withdrawing these aircraft from this zone is a lie. A lie, washed in blood every day. After suffering heavy losses during the first month of the invasion, the Russian Air Force had long kept its distance from the Western anti-aircraft defenses deployed by Ukraine. But Russia now appears to be putting its pilots at greater risk to support infantry on the ground. Russians strengthened the role of the Air Force and they're trying to keep up the momentum, says General Dominique Tricond, the former head of the French military mission to the UN. Naturally, the more planes in the sky, the more opportunities there are to shoot them down. What's more, when pilots provide ground support, they are forced to descend in altitude, a vulnerability that the Ukrainians are probably taking advantage of. If this Russian air effort is costly, it also seems to be paying off for ground troops on the front line. By approaching targets as closely as possible, Moscow's air force is increasing the effectiveness of the powerful glide bombs fitted to its Sukhoi fighters. These guided munitions, capable of flying long distances to the front lines, have reduced the risk of Russian aircraft being shot down. Dropped precisely, they can easily destroy the underground bunkers sheltering Ukrainian soldiers. Before the war, the Russian Air Force was not known for using guided missiles on the same massive scale as Western Air Forces. In fact, the Russians had a huge stock of standard bombs known as FABs, they grafted small airfoils onto them and added guidance kits to make them much more precise. These bombs weigh between 200 and 1,500 kilograms. When they hit the ground, they do a lot of damage.